Well, here we are at Theater of Dreams, and look who's there. Oh, hi. Hey, there's Carol. <laughs> and Joe? Come on I over. Would be, I would be hiding in the background, behind the scenes. That's right. That is, Come yeah. on in. Welcome to the Theater of Dreams. The Theater of Dreams. What do we got? Every door is a dreamy environment. You don't know what's behind those doors, but you know it's something surreal, something special, something magical. We actually got permission from Dean Morrissey, who wrote the children's book, Ship of Dreams, and Joe managed to blow these up and install them as our doors. They're actually wow. combinations of a few different artists that I put together right. to make our own surreal environments. Kind of a steampunky look. And our friends helped us with all the stuff. The one behind work. you over here as well? Yeah. Yeah. That's another show. That's the door to the green room where all our talented performers put their clothes and makeup on. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'll follow you. Go ahead. Those are, those are, this is the magic tree, of course, that, uh, Tree of Life? Oh. Yeah, that's not actually Magic tree of life. It's not lit up right now. Yeah, this tree, it was actually meant to, well, it wasn't supposed to be here at all, but it's actually holding up the entire roof. Uh, because when this was a church, these two corners actually were solid corners, and they came out so far, it was really tight entrance. So I tore these corners out and rounded them out. I was told that this actually was not a load-bearing wall, this corner, so I tore it all out and found out that I was lucky to live through it because everything could have come down on my head. So we put in a pole... They call them a lollipole. It's a metal post that you use to hold up the basements of houses. We had it installed in the concrete. We stuck it in all there. It was done, and uh, one day a uh, retired Air Force colonel who helped us with all these brick, walk, uh, brick wall things um, was helping do that, and I asked him because he, he's a very artistic guy who finishes his own houses and does all this really cool stuff. I said, Jerry, how can we make this ugly post look like a tree or something? Because it's just ugly and it has to be here because we have to support the ceiling. And he goes, you know what, i got a log at home that might be perfect for this. I was going to use it in a bar in my basement, but now it's just sitting in my backyard. I've had it shellacked and all this stuff just sitting there. So he said, I'll go get it if you want. And 20 minutes later, he showed up with this beautiful piece of wood. And I told Carol, I said, I know we just spent all this time and effort to put in this post, but we got to rip it out because look at this. This is too beautiful. It's too perfect. It's a gift. That That's is, real wood? Yeah, That's this is wood. an actual log. This came out of one so of we the ripped out, forest. We ripped out the steel Before post. The fires. We ripped out the steel post that was sunk into the concrete and everything else and put this in instead. Had it, We cut it down and, uh, you know, five hours later it was in, holding up the ceiling. Very nice. It's beautiful. So it's, it's a great feature when people walk in, I think. This is our path, my 48-hour path. <laughs> well, no, you spent more than that time on it. Carol actually made this path. It was my design to say, let's do this. I wanted it to feel like you're kind of like walking on a Milky Way or something going in. Mm -hmm. I wanted to emulate that on the ceiling, but uh, never got that done. I was going to do it in uh, milk-colored plexiglass about six inches below the ceiling with lights above it so it looked like a star field going in, but that hasn't happened yet. And then uh, here it is, the main showroom of the Theater of Dreams. Carol, can we get a little more light in here? Carol? I hear her because you can't see anything. Right now this is not set up for a regular audience. We can see seven there to we two. Go. Yeah, that'll, that'll show up. Even brighter if you can, honey. Just the house lights. So there it is. This is the uh, theater right now. We don't, don't have all our chairs set up. This is for our wizard camp that we've been doing over the last week. So this is where the students sit. Those tables are where they practice their things. But normally those tables don't exist, and this place is just jammed with chairs. Uh, you can see that black window there is the tech booth. We also have a panel that we designed to fit in that, so you can't tell that there's anything back there. And then we run uh, lighting and sound via the show tech. At least that was the original plan. Uh, the stage is the stage. It's... Uh, Something that we built, it's four by eight foot panels that can come apart, be taken out completely. We can reconfigure the space so we can actually have, uh, if we wanted to do something in the round, we could do arena style where performers are on the floor and the audience is seated up on these, or the other way around where there's an elevated platform in the middle of the room. We've never done that though. This has just uh, been in place since we opened. 
and uh, serves us well as a storage spot because <laughs> it's all empty underneath. There's lots of stuff in there, under there. Yeah, we made sure that when we um, painted this, that all four walls as well as the wainscoting and all that is all the same so that when the curtains and all these things get removed, one day when we sell it, um, it'll be all finished the same way. A finished space for somebody who might want it that way. But, uh, yeah, Carol and I did 90% of the work in here. We, we, this was a white shoebox when we bought it. It was just white, just a big white box. So uh, we, we, spent, hall too. we spent all this time <laughs> building. Yeah, we put that whole wall up, that entire wall. It was an education on all levels. Uh, I had never done drywall. Never done framing. Never done anything. I've never done wood. And we were understand. talking on the podcast about the artwork. And let's just take a quick oh, sure. peek oh, yeah. at some of these uh, pictures. Uh, again, the artist was? Rodney Wood. Rodney Wood. RodneyWood.com. Rodney Wood. Wood. Rodney Wood. No. Kind of uh, interesting. Yeah, you said like these are animals just in human habitat. Human settings. There. Human settings. He calls this series human animals. Yeah, zebra on a couch. And my favorite one is the polar bear. The polar bear, yeah, on the bed. Floating in the Arctic. Oh, I see, yeah. Like the zebra or the uh, giraffe here, it's nice. That's Carol's favorite. <laughs> favorite. And the second is the There's the flamingos in the bathtub. Kangaroo in the library. That picks up the dark light really good. Yeah. On the screen there, it looks great. So, this is a theater of dreams. Very good. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for visiting.